Hi guys, this is Dr. Dilip, your internal medicine educator at Preplat and Neat Assist. And we're going to have a kind of a review on how was the Neat Assist 2022 exam. And let us have a kind of a quick discussion of what has happened in the exam so far. And before going to the discussion, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you for putting such a hard work for the last so many years in writing such an exam and for successfully completing it. And irrespective of the results that you're going to get, the hard work that you have put in is something that can never be undermined. It's something that's going to be helpful for your entire life, especially when it comes to practice. And I would like to wish all the very best for each and every candidate, especially for those who are expecting the results. And I wanted everyone to come out in flying colors. And let us move to the session. And first, I want to discuss about the blueprint of what NB has asked. You have to note that this is a classic NB style paper where you don't really have a blueprint and the best example for that will be the genetics part. You had around 19 to 20 questions from genetics alone from different different areas, different different domains. It's a kind of a bouncer to a need as aspirant by NB for this year. And in the next year, you might get different domain where you don't really expect. So people think like this time there have been a lot of questions on genetics. So they tend to concentrate on genetics so much for the next year. But NB again can bounce you out by giving very few questions on genetics next so it's completely unpredictable and look at the questions it's been asked from different different domains there is not one particular domain of importance or not one particular domain of relevance and these are wayward and half set questions this is something that you can't really predict from a standard exam and look at the gastro part gastro part is a little okay 1920 questions have been asked from gastro still i feel it's not uniformly distributed it's very half hazard and three questions on viral hepatitis, it's an expected topic, autoimmune hepatitis, expected topic, surprisingly two questions from alcoholic hepatitis, one with regards to treatment of alcoholic hepatitis in patients with high mantle discriminant function, that is corticosteroids, and one in the form of follow-up of alcoholic hepatitis, that is the Lilly score. And two questions have come from Dili, which I've said it's a very, very important area, it's an expected area, and one question on TPN, and uh, another question on alcohol and dopatrin's contract, which is simple and straightforward. And they've asked many other questions which are at a very basic level. They are not very difficult to answer in the first place. Look at cardiology. You had around like 20 to 25 questions and 7 questions alone were from the ECG section and 4 to 5 questions were from basic ECG discussion and another question from sine wave pattern, another question on J-point, another question on antiarrhythmics and surprisingly we had only one question on ischemic heart disease that is from uh, acute coronary syndrome with regards to what you don't do that is reduction preload in the setting of inferior MA and right ventricular MA and few questions have come from valvular heart disease as well which is something that is expected and look at the statistics part only three questions in that uh, one question was on measure of central tendons that is median another question on independent teeth another question on RCT and its relevance and we had two questions on toxicology both were extremely simple and straightforward so that's not worth discussing right now and look at infectious diseases. You had around like 15 to 16 questions and most of them were from tropical infection, which is something that I've emphasized so much in the previous YouTube session on important topics. And most of the questions were pretty much basic and easy and straightforward. And I don't think you would have found much difficult answering ID questions. And uh, four questions were from very non-specific areas, even though some students say that these are from therapeutic principles in medicine. But I would say like, look at the questions. Morphin side effects, meiosis, very straightforward, OCP and cardiovascular disease, hormone replacement therapy, acne treatment, all these are very straightforward questions. And nephrology had around 18 20 questions, and one of the most easiest in the NEAT SS 2022 paper is the nephrology part. It was very, very simple and straightforward. Most of the questions can be answered at a NEAT PG level, it's a level on the NEAT SS level. So, very much simple and straightforward questions. And pulmonary medicine did have around six to eight questions and in that the plural effusion and the TB part with re relation to the mesothelial cells is something that's been asked for quite a while. I think it's been repeated for the fourth time or fifth time in the last five years. And when it comes to neurology and psychiatry, we had around uh, 16 to 20 questions and OCD was the proper psychiatric question remaining. Everything is neurology only and uh, you did have questions from the expected topics only not from unexpected topics and most of the questions were once again very much uh, simple and straightforward and the environment and nutrition chapter you had around three questions and that the water requirement question alone is a little tricky apart from that the other two questions were pretty much simple 
and uh, surprisingly endocrine had only three questions rheumatology had only five questions immunology had only two questions hematology and oncology had uh, 11 questions combined together and endocrine questions were once again very very simple rheumatology questions were also very much simple and straightforward immunology questions one question was a little tricky with regards to tlr5 and its ligand that is flagellin and hematology questions again were very simple and oncology questions were again from the expected domains only not very different so what are the takeaways the exam is moderate to tough you have to accept that tough in the sense it's not tough because you need a lot of knowledge tough because you need a lot of memory it's a classic nb style paper nb generally when it comes to internal medicine they tend to emphasize on a lot of memory and vague stuff rather than knowledge and 50 percent questions were pretty much easier those who are preparing at a neat pg level itself would be able to answer these questions 25 percent questions are kind of never heard of questions or difficult questions or poorly read stuff by a postgraduate for example the genetics part where he had around 20 to 25 questions but apart from that uh, more than 80 percent of the questions were from important topics that have been emphasized already in plenty of our past discussions for example look at the youtube session which i've released like 15 to 20 days before the neat ss exam where i emphasized on certain topics and i would say like more than 80 percent of the questions were from those expected topics only and more than 90 percent were topic repeats rather than direct repeats even though we did have like three to five direct repeats but more than 90 percent were actually topic repeats and without any surprise more than 95 percent questions were from prepared and ss q bank topics only and that's the reason why i emphasized a lot on solving the q bank in the past and what can you expect for the next year you're going to expect the same next year unless until something dramatic happens within the system you're going to get some clinical questions, some clinically appearing questions where the questions may not be completely clinical. You're going to get some one-liners, some bouncers. And of course, you're going to take this paper as a blueprint and you're going to start solving the MCQs based on the topics that's been asked. But I cannot guarantee that you're going to get the same kind of blueprint. When it comes to NB, the blueprint is where what and half is at. But the topics are going to remain the same. So I would say like keep preparing no matter what. And this time you got around 20 25 mcqs on genetics but next time you may get just two mcqs but again the topics are going to be very very relevant so what's the road ahead for the next year as i've been emphasizing for quite a while mcqs mcqs and mcqs this is going to be the key for sorting out any exam for that matters and the preparation strategy is not going to change even though INASS definitely yes it's going to be difficult compared to that of NEATSS but the preparation strategy for INASS as well as NEATSS is going to be the same even though we can get more clinical questions more questions on trials and more uh, new questions with regards to INASS but the kind of preparation is not going to change and that's where your Q-Bank comes into play as I told you already prepared in NEATSS Q-Bank is something that is quintessential and one needs to solve at least a minimum of 10,000 plus MCQs with regards to medicine to get a decent rank. And once you have solved like 10,000 plus questions, I would recommend like if you're able to solve like 100% questions in the prepared and ATSS Bank, that's completely well and good. But if you're able to solve at least 10,000 plus MCQs, you'll get a kind of confidence boost and uh, you'll be able to know that what sort of questions that you can get in exams and uh, you'll be again very well prepared for the bouncers as well and what about the videos videos are definitely relevant it's going to serve as a backup for your knowledge that you're going to gain because without knowledge i don't think you will have even the drive and motivation to move forward and do the questions and of course you know like this knowledge that you're going to gain in the three years of residentship is something that's going to stay with you forever and that's going to dictate the kind of practitioner that you're going to become so that's why i would say like videos are very very important and that's going to serve as a motivation and fire for doing the question so never ignore the videos but on the top of the chart is going to be your q bank and the mcqs what about harrison harrison definitely yes it is relevant nobody's going to say no for harrison but it's up to the candidate to read it line by line to answer that extra 20 25 questions you need to learn the entire harrison by heart probably for people who don't have sufficient time a shortcut for that will be to solve as much as mcqs as possible so ultimately your preparation strategy is not going to change and please don't worry about the results you have done your part for people who have worked hard and you have completed the exam just take a break maybe just go out of the discussion for a week and let the results come because you're not going to change the results by just worrying so just wait for the results and i'm sure that you have done your best 
and all of you are going to come out with flying colors and i wish you all the very best thank you very much subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder